hello. Fancy meeting you guys out here in the middle of nowhere. Mike Glover, Philcraft Survival. Um, today we're talking about vehicle uh, everyday carry considerations. And one of the things I want to cover today on this episode is talk about the placement of the everyday carry pistol inside the vehicle and why or why not that could be an advantage or disadvantage. You know, a lot of people uh, immediately default to inside the waistband as their carry consideration all the time. You know where everyday carry considerations are good inside the waistband? When you're standing on a flat range, uh, running the gun onto a paper or steel target. That's when it's good. Everything else is a consideration, a tactical potential advantage. So I have to think like, hey, if I'm sitting in the car and I'm shrouded by my seatbelt and that's over my everyday carry pistol and appendix carry, well, that's not doing me much use. Are you sleeping with a belt on inside the waistband and your carry at home and home defense? No, you're not sitting on the couch watching TV with your pistol inside the waistband. All of these considerations matter. So today's episode, we're talking all of them. We're timing them and we're uh, spitting facts instead of spitting assumptions. All right, guys. So in this scenario, this is going to be like your similar setup. Uh, for the first thing that we're going to evaluate is the 20 liter. This is uh, Phil Craft Survival's everyday carry bag. This is 20 liters in capacity. That's how much you can carry in it. So if you dump 20 liters in your bag, which you can because it's PVC protected. So it's got a uh, water resistance. It doesn't leak out except for the zippers. You can carry first aid, survival, general purpose. But the purpose of a 20 liter is carrying it in the front of the cab. Now, the disadvantage of this is it's going to take time to remove the flap and get access to the pistol. Also, the pistol floats. I got a uh, SIG P320 um, and with a, a can, a Mod X9 can on it, all tricked out, ready to go. But this is just floating in this bag, right? You, you can come up with different setups to be able to uh, have this tied down in the bag. But for my scenario with my kids, they're strapped in the seats. I, I, I'm not going to have to worry about that, but I want ready access. This is not in the back of the truck. This is in the cab, either on the ground, passenger feet, or inside the seat in this situation. The disadvantage is I have to access it by removing the flap, but I've staged certain things. Like I've removed the zipper in this case. If you're setting yourself up for failure, it's not paying attention to the indications that something's about to pop off. So if I see somebody road raging, I might just unzip this flap, grab this T handle, unzip it, and just get it set up. We're gonna test it right now and look at the overall time as compared to other ready access segments uh, including on my waist, inside the waistband, and uh, readily accessible by the center console. So here we go. Get ready. Stand by. Okay, so not a huge tactical advantage as far as speed and efficiency, but look, you have to safely store your firearm to be able to, to uh, travel. Um, and I'm not going to have this at the ready just driving on the road, right? This isn't uh, Baghdad. So I, I want to make sure that I have this secured, properly stowed. And then when I ready access it, one of the advantages of this can in particular, because I can remove the baffles, it allows me to get around this A pillar to handle this self-defense scenario. This scenario is not, th these examples are not focused in on the shooting or the specifics of the scenario, but more about the employment, getting the gun from where it's at into the fight is what we're talking about, but not the fastest time, but let's move on and see what else we got. All right, so uh, we're moving on to the Atom 8 liter Patagonia fly fishing bag. One of the advantages of this bag is as you see it in the orientation of my body, I can move it from the back to the front like a chest rig as I'm driving down the road, which is why I liked it as a contractor uh, in the agency. So when I go from left to right, that's a disadvantage because I'm right-handed and then I have to access this where the pistol might be oriented down because the, the pocket for this is right here. So it just sets up like a wonky kind of setup and the gun is free floating in this bag like it is in my 20 liter. Now you can come up with creative setups, you can modify it, that's all good and well. And I recommend you do that, especially for being low vis. Take a civilian bag that you normally use, add your modifications, and then you have the perfect bag versus getting a mil spec, a mil -spec Molly bag where it doesn't look like it's civilian. So uh, again, we'll test this and see how it turns out time-wise to see if it's faster than the 20 liter. Also remember, I carry my gun inside this bag without one in the chamber because it's free floating. I don't wanna risk this flopping into first aid equipment and then potentially negligently or accidentally discharging so I don't have that. 
that's my scenario, that's my situation, and uh, yours might vary. So here we go. Get ready, stand by. All right, so you guys saw it was pretty fast, pretty efficient. I do have this open, understanding I see something that's going wrong, I'm opening it up, I'm getting set up for this. In my specific scenario, I would never carry a pistol that's loose in a bag with one in the chamber. Now people go, oh man, you should never do that. Well, uh, you don't have twins, right? You don't have kids. You don't have specific things that uh, are going to increase risk to those that you love. And I am used to situation awareness that's gonna allow me to get ahead, but never, you know, I don't know every scenario. A guy could walk up to me with a gun pointed at my head as he approaches my vehicle, and I'm not gonna have the ability to stage or get ahead of him. So for this specific scenario, it was faster than this because of the proximity of distance, but let's see if we can get a little bit faster. All right, guys, the next one we're gonna talk about is my fanny pack. I designed this with uh, Evan, Hafer from Black Rifle Coffee. When we were contractors, we had a similar setup to this. Uh, he made it for his employees. I made it to sell to you guys because I believe in all the characteristics that made it very good at doing its job, especially employing a pistol or everyday carry pistol, but also acting as a chest rig. So it does, it does several things, but the advantage of this, especially when sitting in a vehicle is one, it looks super cool, right? Fanny packs are, are the coolest thing ever. But when I'm sitting in the vehicle, I could have my lap belt underneath this. So this is readily accessible, but also it's super fast and convenient to get access to my pistol. This is a 365 XL, and this is the comp version, but it comes with this little accessory, which I love, which gets rid of all those things that I was talking about and free floating a gun in a bag. Like, don't do that. This setup is designed for compact or subcompact pistols. It allows me to set it at a specific angle right here for the advantage of getting a better draw. And it's adhered, it's secure, it's safe. But again, I could draw it pretty quick. Now we're gonna assess how fast I could draw this pistol and have two shots on target. But I assume based on my understanding of this in a tactical environment that I've used operationally, that it's gonna be the fastest kind of setup. So. Let's go ahead and test it out. Get ready. Stand by. The cool thing about a fanny pack too is like, I usually don't know what to do with my hands. If I don't have pockets, I could just like kind of do this and look cool. This was super fast. It's one of the fastest draws that we tested because of the ability to ready access a pistol that I don't have the chamber that has one in the chamber already that's even set off at an angle that's appropriate for the position I'm carrying it in, right? If I'm carrying a pistol off my waist and I want the advantage, well, I might want to tilt or I might want to drop off. In this, I have it set up to where it's at an angle in position with my hand, basically like an appendix carry draw with the same obstacles of trying to get to the pistol, uh, whether it's around my shirt or through my pants or through the seatbelt, but having it readily accessible here. So I might even get inside my car and just zip it open like this, where this is just one movement and now it's like drawing from appendix carry without having to remove a shirt or remove a lap belt because the belt's underneath it. So super fast, super advantageous, especially in an extremist situation where I have to draw my pistol now. Let's move on. So we're moving on to uh, inside the waistband holsters. This is our magnet retention holster, which has magnet retention holding the barrel and the front of the slide, which is the, uh, the right and left side of the slide. And what's advantageous about this is the retention is clear and free once you remove from the magnet. So there's no friction around the shroud of the trigger holding onto the pistol. So once you kind of push past that certain or pull past that certain point, it's free and clear. So a clean draw stroke. The problem, obviously, sitting in a vehicle with appendix carry is it's inside the waistband underneath my seatbelt, right? Underneath my shirt. So yeah, you could stage, you could remove it and get access to it where you could offset it, but I'm driving down the road, drawing a live pistol through obstacles while my hand's potentially on the steering wheel because I might be driving, right? And, and imagine you're in a situation where you get inside of your vehicle and if your SOP isn't to kind of remove this and shroud it around uh, your, your, your pistol and around your holster, 
you're not going to think to do this. You're just going to default to your routine. And if your default to the routine is having this underneath everything, then how long is that going to take you to draw? A long time. And a lot of seatbelts lock like this lap belt is locked. The retention is on this side. So if I have this locked mechanically and I'm trying to pull through this, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Let's just call it like, the, like it is. So not the quickest draw. It will be faster depending on how I stage it. But the worst case scenario in all these situations is the pistol is put away and I have to move through material, through zippers, through clothing to access it. So not the best setup, but how are you doing it every day you get in your car? You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time in their vehicles. A lot of self-defense situations happen in and around vehicles. So how are you staging this? Let's test it and let's talk about it. Okay, so, so pretty fast when staged accordingly, but not the fastest when I have to work through obstacles. Again, this is uh, situation dependent. It's also uh, behavioral dependent. How you default in your patterns is going to determine what setup is going to work best for you. If you're single, you're lonely, you don't have a lot of friends, then yeah, you can stage a pistol sitting on top of the passenger seat of your vehicle. I wouldn't recommend that, especially if you drive uh, and you're moving around, you don't want that flopping all over the vehicle. But what I mean is the situation of your particular uh, scenario in your vehicle with your family, with your friends, with your commute, with your vehicle is going to determine the output. I don't like depending on just an inside the waistband pistol as the security means of protecting myself or my family. So what I want you to think about is as a tactical advantage, separate just like I do with home defense, vehicle defense separate than uh, everyday carry defense. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get in your car, pull your pistol out of, outside the waistband, right? Um, and then manipulate the pistol and put it in a wedge or manipulate the pistol and put it in a bag. Have a separate pistol for, for self-defense, uh, either using this that's going to work in both scenarios or that is going to be just for vehicle defense versus just for everyday carry. That's going to be a, a tactical advantage. All right, so the last staging position that we're going to talk about is the position of it wedged in between your center console unit and the, the, the seat. Now, when I was a contractor, we rolled that way all the time because we needed ready access uh, against an immediate potential threat. So this is not like every day, right? I mean, if I'm on a commute for eight hours, certainly I'm taking a pistol and putting it here in this position. Now this is a single action pistol, just like the SIG 320. And a single action pistol only has one action. You pull the trigger and the gun goes boom. So not the best setup for just wedging into a vehicle, but that's secure. That's not going anywhere. Magic isn't gonna shoot that gun. So this is going to be fast because I could grab this pistol and move it. Now you're probably asking yourself, because I did it uh, with a SIG suppressor and this uh, can, we're doing separate content on the advantages of why you should use a suppressor in home defense and also vehicle defense. But I have this can on and it's wedged here, but it's gonna take a little bit more uh, manipulation around this A-pillar, because I just swing it this way, I'm gonna hit the A-pillar. So I'm gonna manipulate it back, retract it, and then extend it, which is gonna cost me a little bit of time, but not much. So here we go. All right, not too bad. One of the advantages, obviously, of a suppressor is I don't have to have ear pro. Normally, you don't drive around with ear protection on your head or on your ears. So it's a, it's a tactical advantage, for, uh, certainly. But also, it, it wedges the gun perfectly in this position. Just a flopping pistol uh, without a can um, isn't the best position to be in. But if I take this can and I wedge it down, in, in this case, like this, I mean, I could literally put it like that, which is kind of weird looking, but that's ready accessible. And, and it's not going anywhere, but if I grab it, I have that uh, access to the back strap of the gun. Fast, but not the fastest, but a pretty good setup. Now this would be a gun I would consider a self-defense vehicle gun. Um, I'm not carrying that inside the waistband. I'm not carrying that in a fanny pack, but that's the reason we tested both, the SIG and this one. I don't like long cans on pistols. I like short cans. 
but this is a good setup for home defense and vehicle defense. All right, guys, so uh, this target was about 100 meters from the car, so these are pretty good shots for 100 yards. I had a couple shots off. That was because of the can on the Glock. I didn't have suppressor sights. Get suppressor sights if you're running a can. Uh, I use that Mod X9, which is my favorite suppressor uh, made, made by SIG, uh, where you can remove baffles and use the shorter version of it, uh, where I have suppressor sights. And this is all about considerations in self-defense. Safety first, please. I should have put this in the beginning of the, of the uh, uh, video. But when we're talking about considerations and you're practicing different setups, make sure you have, you know, Oakley ballistic eye protection. Make sure you have ops core or some uh, equivalent hearing protection to protect your ears. Uh, we always want to think about that, especially as we uh, push the training. This is all about considerations. The considerations are to activate this creative side of your mind and applying some of the things we're talking about to your actual experience. You know, experiences may vary. We create equipment, we create content, and we create a training that's gonna facilitate uh, your path moving forward, but it may vary, right? So uh, don't go down the rabbit hole and be like, well, I would never do this. Well, you're not me, right? I'll give you my opinion. I'll tell you in best practice why I do what I do, but it's not conclusive. Uh, seek other people, other companies that are putting out good information, GBRS, all these guys uh, in my circle are good uh, sources for that information, and find all the links below for the next training course. If you're, if you're thinking about training, uh, certainly train with us, but open your mind, open your experiences to training with other people as well. I think that's all I got, guys. PhilCraftSurvival.com, uh, Mike Glover Actual was my personal uh, account on YouTube where I do uh, similar content. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that piece, and uh, until next time, peace out.